Hello everyone, I'm Takashi. Today I will talk about classical versus quantum realm oracles. This is a joint work with Mark Chandry. Uh, the random oracle model, ROM, was introduced by Bilal and Rogaway in 93. Uh, this model is the idealization of cryptographic hash functions. In the ROM, uh, some random function H is randomly chosen at the beginning of security games, and then adversary is allowed to make uh, oracle access to the random function. And the ROM is very useful for analyzing practical cryptographic schemes, so this has been used uh, for a rising variety of constructions. Uh, the quantum run record model, QROM, is a quantum version of the ROM introduced by Bonnet et al. in 2011. Uh, the difference from the original ROM is that in the QROM, adversary is allowed to make quantum query to the random oracle. That is, uh, it can query a uh, quantum superposition of inputs, and then the oracle returns uh, the output in superposition. And the reason why we should uh, consider uh, such a quantum access to the oracle is that uh, the random oracle is usually in instantiated with some fixed cryptographic hash functions in the real world. Therefore, uh, if adversary has a quantum computer, then it can quantumly evaluate the hash function. And so this corresponds to quantum oracle access in the quantum random oracle model. And uh, this is why we should study uh, QROM for ensuring post-quantum security. Here I would like to review what are known about the QROM. As pointed out by the first uh, work by Bonnet et al, uh, many proof techniques in the ROM doesn't work in the QROM, at least in a straightforward manner. And those techniques include pre-image awareness and adaptive programmability. Uh, therefore, in the past decade, new proof techniques in the QROM have been developed, and this line of research made a great success, and now almost all major protocols in the ROM are also proven secure in the QROM, as those protocols include Fujisaki Okamoto, OAEP, Fiat Shamir, and Full Domain Hash. And so now there is no known scheme uh, that is secure in ROM, but insecure in QROM, uh, then it is natural to ask the following question. Does security in ROM imply security in QROM? This is our main question. And in this work, we give both positive and negative answer to the question. And the, our first result is a negative answer. Uh, we give the first separation between ROM and QROM, specifically or we give a constructions of PKE and signature schemes uh, that are secure in the ROM but insecure in the QROM. And I remark that uh, a similar result was also shown in the concurrent work by Zhang et al. And uh, on the other hand, we also give uh, some positive result that uh, specifically we give uh, our some ROM to QROM lifting theorems. Uh, under some conditions. And we also show some applications of the lifting theorems uh, to the setting of signatures and the query complexity. From now, I will explain more technical details about our separation result. Uh, and for giving our separation, we introduce a new primitive which we call proof of quantum access to random oracle, POQRO, of which captures the essence of the separation between ROM and QROM. And intuitively, uh, this is an interactive protocol between prover and verifier, uh, where prover proves that it has a quantum access to random oracle to classical verifier. More specifically, uh, the verifier first generates a pair of public key and secret key and send public key to the prover. And then prover given public key and quantum access to random function uh, generates the proof pi and then sends the proof pi to the verifier and the verifier verifies the proof to 
uh, output acceptance or rejection. And we require completeness and soundness. Completeness means that if both parties work honestly, then uh, verifier access with probability 1. And the soundness means that if prover only has classical access to random function, uh, then verifier access with negligible probability. And if you're familiar with the notion of proof of contentness uh, introduced by uh, Braketsky et al., then you may uh, find similarity with POQ. However, the difference is that in POQ, we only require soundness against completely classical cheating prover. On the other hand, uh, in our POQRO, we require soundness against uh, even quantum cheating prover uh, with only classical uh, Oracle access. So this is the difference from POQ. Uh, we give two constructions of POQRO in this work, and the first construction is based on the LW assumption. Interestingly, uh, this construction is actually exactly the same as the recent construction of POQ by uh, Braketsky et al. That is, uh, we just observed that the POQ actually also satisfies the soundness as POQRO. And because the construction is exactly the same, uh, I will not explain the detail, uh, but their protocol looks like the following. Uh, the verifier first generates claw-free permutation F and sends F to the prover. And then the prover runs some quantum computation by using quantum access to H, and finally gets some pair of classical strings M and D that satisfy this equation, where X0 and X1 are the claw of f. And especially what is important is that we have a time of h of x0, x or h of x1 here. Uh, therefore, uh, if a cheating prover only has classical access to random oracle, uh, then uh, this x or is uniformly random unless the adverse requires both x0 and x1. However, uh, it can query both of them only with negligible probability by their claw freeness. Uh, therefore, if prover, cheating prover only had classical access to random oracle, then this time looks random. And therefore, uh, it is difficult to generate M and D that satisfy uh, this equation with high probability. Therefore, uh, this gives the separation between uh, ROM and QROM. And by using POQRO, uh, we can easily get uh, ROM QROM separations for signature and PK schemes. And for example, I will explain uh, the case of signatures. Uh, let Pi Sig be your EUF CMS secure signature scheme. And then consider modified scheme Pi Prime Sig whose signing algorithm returns the secret key if the message is a valid POQRO proof. And this modification doesn't affect security in the ROM uh, because by the standards of POQRO, uh, adversary in the ROM cannot find valid POQRO proof. On the other hand, uh, this modification makes the protocol completely insecure in the QROM because the adversary in the QROM can find uh, valid POQRO proof by the completeness of POQRO. Therefore, it can just query uh, such a a valid POQR proof to get the secret key, to completely break the secret key. Uh, therefore, this gives an example of the separation uh, for EUF theme signatures. And similar separation is possible for in the CCE PKE by embedding POQR verification into the decryption oracle. And here we observe that the those separations rely on the fact that there's an oracle that uses the secret information like signing and decryption records. And so this technique is not applicable to EUF and MS signatures where there is no signing key signing queries. And uh, in CPPKE where there is no decryption queries. And uh, the reason why we need oracle with secret information is that uh, the LW based POQRO or needs a secret key for the verification. 
Therefore, if we have publicly verify our PQRO or where the verification can be done publicly, then uh, we can uh, extend uh, those operations to EUF, NMA, and in the CPA PK case. Uh, therefore, next uh, we study uh, constructions of publicly verifiable PQRO. Uh, for constructing publicly verifiable PQRO, we rely on equivocal collision resistant hash ECRH introduced by Amos et al. Uh, ECRH is a function f that satisfies the following two properties. Uh, the first is the collision resistance, uh, that just means that one cannot find the collision of f. And the second is equivocality, uh, which means that uh, one can sample image y along with some quantum state sk and that enables one to find a uh, pre-image x such that f of x equal y and p of x equal b uh, for either of b equal 0 and 1, uh, where p is some predicate that is very balanced. Uh, here, we the very balanced means that the sizes of pre-images of 0 and 1 are not uh, too different. And here I remark uh, that uh, we don't claim that uh, one can find uh, pre-images of pre-images with p of x equals 0 and 1 simultaneously, or rather, uh, sk only enables one to find either of them. However, the point is that uh, the b can be determined adaptively. And I remark that this is a unique quantum capability, because if uh, this can be done classically, then by rewinding, uh, we can break the collision resistance. And in the work of Amos et al., they constructed uh, ECRH uh, for the case of predicate is said to be the least significant bit of X uh, relative to some artificial classical oracle. And we observe that the, their proof uh, naturally extends to arbitrary uh, predicate as long as P is uh, well balanced. Uh, especially, uh, we consider to set uh, the predicate by using a random oracle or with one bit output. Uh, by using uh, ECRH for such a random oracle predicate, uh, we construct publicly verifiable PQRO as follows. And first, we uh, construct four round version of uh, the PQRO. Uh, in the protocol, the verifier first generates ECRHF and sends F to the prover. And then, prover generates the pair of Y and SK and sends Y. And the verifier randomly picks uh, challenge B and sends B to the prover. And then the prover all finds X such that F of X equal Y and H of X equal B uh, by using the equivocality of ECRH and then sends X to the verifier. And then the verifier checks if this equation actually holds. And the completeness is clear from the description. And the soundness can be seen as follows. Uh, by the collision resistance of F, uh, if P only has classical access to H, then it can know the value of H of X for at most one pre-image of X of Y, uh, except for negligible probability. And then uh, the probability that this particular value of H of X uh, is equal to B is one half because B is randomly chosen by the verifier. Therefore, verifier accepts with the probability at most one half plus negligible. And this soundness error can be amplified uh, to negligible or by uh, parallel repetition. And here I observe that the third round message B is just public coin. So by using the standard technique of Fiat Shamir transformation, or we can reduce the, noun, the number of rounds of the protocol. If we consider the parallel repetition version of the previous protocol, and then we derive the challenges B1 to Bn by using uh, another random oracle G, and then we can compress uh, the protocol to two round protocol, and uh, by the standard technique, uh, we can reduce the soundness of this two round version to the soundness of four round version.
and now we obtain a two round publicly verifiable POQRO from ECRH. Uh, next, I explain how to use a publicly verifiable POQRO to give separations of ROM and QROM uh, for Indo-CP Secure PKE and uh, EUF enemy signatures. Uh, for Indo-CP Secure PKE, uh, the idea is similar to uh, the case of in the CC Secure PKE, uh, but the difference is that uh, now the verification can be done publicly, so we can embed the verification algorithm of POQRO into the encryption algorithm of the PKE rather than decryption algorithm. Therefore, uh, this naturally gives separation for in the CP security. And similarly, uh, by embedding POQRO verification, into the verification algorithm of signature, or we can get separation for EUF enemy signatures. And here I remark that because uh, the construction of ECRH uh, rely on uh, some artificial classical oracle, so those separations also rely on the same uh, classical oracle. Uh, therefore, we don't have actual instantiation of such schemes, uh, but we can interpret these results as a negative evidence uh, for ROM to QROM lifting theorem for those security notions. Uh, next, I would like to move on to our uh, lifting theorem part. So we give lifting theorem for uh, what we call such type game, uh, which is described as follows. The such type game is the interactive protocol between quantum adversary and classical challenger, uh, where the classical challenger finally outputs acceptance or rejection. And our listing theorem is stated as, the, as follows. Uh, let K be the number of challenger's queries. And then for any quantum polynomial time, A making Q quantum queries. Uh, there exists quantum polynomial time B making K classical queries such that uh, the probability that A uh, let the challenger accept is upper bounded by 2Q plus 1 to the power of 2K times probability that B uh, let the challenger accept. And especially uh, when K is constant and Q is polynomial, uh, then uh, we have the following. Uh, if the probability that B let challenge accept is negligible, then uh, the probability uh, that A let the challenge accept is also negligible. And one can see that this corresponds to the security in the ROM because B only makes classical queries. And this corresponds to security in the Q ROM because A makes quantum queries. So in the setting where challenger makes only constant number of queries, uh, this theorem can be seen as a, a lifting theorem from ROM security to the Q ROM security. And uh, I would like to explain some corollaries of our lifting theorem. And first, uh, we can see that there is no POQRO where the number of verified queries is constant. Uh, remark that I, uh, uh, for both of our constructions, uh, verifier makes super constant number of queries because we amplify the sound's error by using super constant number of uh, power repetition. And second, for any NISC in ROM, whose setup and verification algorithm make constant number of queries that is also sound in the QROM, and the typical example is Fiat Chamillia NISC. And we can show a similar lifting theorem for EUF enemy signatures. Unfortunately, we cannot extend this to EUF CMA signatures uh, in such a general form. On the other hand, uh, we give uh, extend lifting theorem to EUF CMA signatures with some additional conditions that are satisfied by Fiat Shamir and FD signatures. And the intuition behind that is that uh, we, we already know that there is a EUF NMA to EUF CMA lifting theorem for those signature schemes. 
So we first apply our ROM to Q ROM lifting theorem for EUF enemy security. And then after that, we apply this lifting theorem to upgrade the security to EUF theme security. And we also obtain an extremely simple tool to get query lower bounds in the Q ROM. And uh, for example, we can reprove the optimality of Grover's algorithm only in two lines. So this is very simple and useful. And the caveat is that this tool often gives non-tight bounds. Uh, but uh, we believe that this tool is useful when we are not interested in tight bounds and we are only interested in giving a uh, negligible upper bound, which is often in the case of in the cryptography. And finally, I would like to explain uh, our proof idea for the lifting theorem. So the lifting theorem is described uh, like this. For explaining the proof idea, uh, let's first consider the classical version of the lifting theorem, uh, where uh, we only consider uh, Adamant 3A that makes classical queries. And I remark that this is still meaningful because uh, A can make unbounded number of queries, uh, whereas B can make only K queries, which is the same number as the challenger's queries. And for proving this classical version, the idea is the following. Uh, for each i equal 1 to k, uh, B randomly guesses when A queries challenges i's query for the first time, including the choice that A never queries that. Uh, then B embeds real random oracle values to the k guessed queries by querying those queries to the real random oracle, uh, while simulating other queries uh, by using a fake random oracle uh, that is simulated by B itself. Then, as long as the guess is correct, B correctly simulates uh, the view of the A, and the probability that the guess is correct is 1 over Q plus 1 to the power of K, uh, therefore, here is a reduction between the probability that A wins and B wins with the reduction loss of the factor of Q plus 1 to the power of K. And our idea is to generalize this to the quantum case. And when A is quantum, A makes quantum queries. And the obvious problem is that because A's queries are quantum, so it is uh, it is unclear how to embed classical random oracle values to those uh, quantum queries. And the solution is to just measure those k-guessed queries. And uh, even though such a measurement uh, may be uh, noticed with non-negligible probability by A, however, uh, by using the, 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 the measure and the reprogram lemma introduced by uh, Don et al., uh, we can show that uh, this works with a slight reverse reduction loss of 2q plus 1 to the power of 2k. And this is the proof of the proof sketch of our lifting theorem. This is the summary slide. Uh, we give the first separations between ROM and QROM. And on the other hand, we also give uh, ROM to QROM lifting theorems uh, for such type games uh, with constant query challenges. And we also give some applications of the lifting theorem to signatures and query complexity. Uh, this is the end of my talk. Uh, thank you for listening.